So a few months back, I uploaded a video going over how to install this AMD Wraith Prism cooler. A lot of people liked that, but that still left a lot of questions, including the whole RGB versus USB cable, some of the cable management, and how to actually control the RGB lighting. So in this video, what we're going to do is go over that, go over some of the features, go over all the different ways you can control it with various softwares from different hardware manufacturers, including the software right here that I would recommend, which is actually specific for this cooler. And speaking of this software, in the back you can see the fan flashing, that's actually Morse code for Sub 2 Tech Hut. That's a feature you could go ahead and apply within this application. And speaking of that, most of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed. So go ahead and do that, it's free and you can always unsubscribe. Now most of this video is going to be going over Windows software, but there are ways, well there is a way to control your RGB lighting in the Linux environment. So I will be touching on that at the end of this video. Now first we are going to be touching on the software made specifically for this cooler. This is an AMD branded cooler made by Cooler Master. So we're going to be jumping into their software and showing you how to set it up. But first when I was installing it I did run into an issue. I had the RGB connectors hooked up and not the USB. And the software didn't even recognize that I had the cooler plugged in. So what I needed to do is go ahead and set up that USB connection and that is what I'm going to show you how to do, including some cable management tips because that seems to be an ongoing issue because they placed the CPU fan header connector on top and the two RGB connectors on the bottom which does kind of make it a hassle to cable manage, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did. My RGB header is at the top of the motherboard so I originally ran the cord up the side of the cooler and out the top and back into the connector. My USB headers are on the bottom so I'll need a way to get around my GPU. So first I removed the video card, got the USB cable for the cooler and plugged the small end right into the wraith and then unplugged the RGB cable. Now to avoid wrapping the cord around the video card I'm going to feed it through the small opening right by the PCI connector. Now this is what it looks like fed through, so all we need to do is plug into the USB header and we are good to go. So installing this software is the same as it would be with almost any other program that you go ahead and download from the internet. There'll be a link below and this is what it looks like right here. Now this is kind of a little logo window, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up a live feed of what my CPU fan looks like right now. So you can kind of see exactly what I'm doing as I'm kind of configuring all these settings. Now to start off, the very first thing that I'm going to do is go down to the bottom here. You could import, export, apply themes, and apply settings. For now, I'm actually going to go ahead and reset to default and click on yes. And then you can see it kind of reset and those are now the default settings. So I'm going to go ahead and actually disable these LEDs so you can kind of see exactly what I'm doing and looking at everything one at a time. So you see up here I have the logo LED, the fan LED, and the ring LED. Now using that USB connector is actually what enables us to control the specific LEDs through this software. So a lot of these windows are set up the same, but some have some different or additional features. So this is the logo LED. So if I go ahead and flip that on, you could actually see that it turned on there as white. Right now it's on static, so I could go ahead and actually change that color if I want to. So I go ahead and click like right here and apply this bright blue, this baby blue color. And then right here if I wanted to I could go ahead and lower or raise the brightness. I also have a color cycle option so that will cycle through various colors. And you also have speed and brightness settings here as well. And then we have breathing so we could actually go in and out, fade in and out between a specific color. So for example if I picked this red color you could see it going in and out. And then here you could also crank up the speed so then it's basically flashing kind of like a heartbeat. From there we could go ahead and go to the fan LED, turn this on, and this is really cool. This is one of my favorite things is this Mirage. You can kind of see the fan blade effects on the screen right now. Uh, what that is is this, so if I went ahead and turned it off, you could see it just went to the basic static. And I turn it back on and it has that Mirage effect completely customizable and you actually have different profile presets so you could go ahead and edit this as you please. You have a brightness here. Here we have three options, the static color, so right now it's a static white. We could go over to color cycle and that will switch it between colors and here you could also do the speed and brightness. And then we have the breathing effect where we can either pick a specific color like so. And then a lot of these will also have the ability to randomize it completely or we could switch back to the specific color. 
For now, I'm gonna switch this to static and let's go back in that kind of purplish pink and lower the brightness a bit just so I can show you the ring LED a lot better. Flipping this on, it starts off in a rainbow option. You can see there is a ton more to select from right here. You can change the speed, the brightness of that, but going through, you could go with a static color. So this is the white, for example, this is what it looks like with blue. And then we also have the options to swirl. So it's going around and here you could do the random color or you can select a specified color, change the speed, brightness, and actually change the direction. So if I wanted it to go the other way, I would just click and it would flip around the other way. Here we have a chase, which is going completely around. It's similar to the swirl, but a little bit different. Then we have a bounce and then Morse code, which is what I showed you earlier. It's gonna flash in Morse code. So by default it just says AMD, but earlier I put sub to tech hut. And then we have the color cycle. So this will randomize and switch in between various colors. And then last but not least, we have a breathing effect. So if I specified a color, made it red, it would go in and out between that color. So now I'm gonna go ahead and actually reset the defaults. And there we go. So that's the Cooler Master software. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of talk more about general RGB applications. Most modern motherboards will come with some sort of RGB application, especially if it says on the box that it's enabled by default. And a lot of various peripherals will require specific RGB software. For example, right here, you can see this works with Razer Chroma RGB, which is a specific program for that Razer hardware. So it'll kind of allow you to sync up your peripheral LEDs with your cooler. So that's super, super cool. For me specifically, I'm running a Asus motherboard. So if I typed in Armory, Crate, this is the Asus application that will allow you to do a lot of this. Now I do have the Cooler Master set as my default, so this is gonna not have as many features as it would without this. But here you do have a lot of different effects such as the static breathing, color cycle. This is one a lot of people talked about. This is how I got that smart effect. If you apply this, it will change the LEDs in your system to match your CPU temperature or your CPU usage up to certain temperatures, which is really, really cool if that's something you really want to watch out for. It's kind of handy if your system completely goes bright red, you know that you need to calm down a little bit. Through the ASUS software, there's also an option to sync with the audio, so that's really cool, and then adaptive color. So if you're playing a game, the system will kind of match with the color that is going on on the screen. If you're looking into buying hardware, I almost would recommend Aura Sync because of these. For me, this is absolutely perfect. And before I started using the Cooler Master software, this was just about everything I needed. Now there are other software for various components such as ASRock has their Polychrome RGB software, Gigabyte has RGB Fusion, MSI has the Mystic Light, Razer, as we said, has the Chroma, and Crosshair has the IQRGB software. Now, just for giggles, I did try the IQ software on my Asus machine. This isn't really recommended. I just wanted to see if it would work. You should use the software that is built specifically for your hardware, but even using this software with it plugged into the RGB headers, it did detect the RGB, but I didn't really have that much control over it, but I could apply some of their effects on the cooler itself, but it didn't work with like the RAM in my system, for example, that is plugged into the Asus specific components. So ultimately, I would recommend you go with an application that is hardware specific to your machine. And if you want extra control for the RGB components within your Cooler Master cooler from AMD or from Cooler Master, this is the application you're gonna want to use. Now with Linux, there is actually an option to be able to control your RGB lighting. Now it's not made from the manufacturers and it's not supported by the manufacturers, so it's not gonna be nearly as good. It's done through OpenRGB, which is a community driven application with one primary developer and he is doing an absolutely fantastic job making this software. So real quick here, I am in Linux and this is OpenRGB. And what I'm going to be doing is showing you some of the settings that so far I figured out how to edit. Now this isn't completely everything and I'm sure there's things not working yet and I'm sure I don't have certain things configured yet, but I am currently working on that so I can give you guys a full fledged tutorial on how to do this. But starting off, I'm going to bring up that live feed again real quick and we're going to edit some of these Wraith Prism settings. 
can see here under zone when it's plugged into the USB header, we have the logo, fan, and ring. So we could apply specific customizations to each one of those components individually. For example, under logo, if we select that and we go into mode, now I will note only some of these will work with uh, the specific zones that are available. So I'm pretty sure that chase works perfectly fine. So if I set it over to chase, you can see that that is now enabled. And then I could go ahead and change the color a little bit. So if I go apply colors, you could see how that applied it to everything. Or you could do set all devices and that sets everything. And you can see that this is also changing the RAM slots over there on the side. Now I could also do something else like let's do uh, the fan only. Let's select rainbow and then go to set all devices and then that will do a rainbow cycle through of all the devices. But you can see it switched here. This is part of the stuff I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to really get a grasp on everything that's going on. Uh, if I go to, let's go to the fan again and try to set uh, breathing and then you could apply to all devices or apply colors and then that will do that. And that's just some of these settings. You could change the speed here too. Like I said, I haven't figured everything out yet, but you also can go through and do other devices here on the side. For example, this is one of my RAM slots, and if I went to Rainbow, you can see it changed to Rainbow. I go to the other one, go to Rainbow, go to the uh, Prism, All Zones, go to Rainbow, and then we got it really looking good now. I am having issues controlling the uh, case fans through some of the USB headers on my ASUS motherboard. So once I figure everything out and I have the knowledge to do a complete full tutorial and guide with doing this in Linux, I will definitely upload that video. But for now, if you can't wait and you need to try it out, there'll be a link in the description to a video from the developer of the software which goes over how the at least the tutorial I used to get it working at the capabilities that I got it to work. So that about wraps everything up. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Hit that thumbs up button. You know what to do if you didn't like that video. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.